while. We'll give it a few more minutes to be able to have folks come on in. Last one for the year, Amy. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, because I'm really not thinking that people are going to want to be able to come in and meet on the 21st. Yeah, right. Yeah. OK. Just checking in on Liz. Oh, hello. Sure. Oh, excellent. I was just checking in on you. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. I'm excellent. No, nope, totally you. fine. All totally right. Fine. Do, we, do we have everybody? Uh, I think we have who we're going to get. And uh, Dims has reminded me that this is, in fact, our last meeting of the year because I am unlikely that uh, a bunch of people are going to want to be able to meet on the 21st. That's probably true, isn't it? Okay. Yes. Wow. I, I, you could get together for eggnog online. Uh, I'm sure we could get a, like eggnog offline too. There's there's enough Zoom meetings. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the last full meeting for the year then. Amazing. All the usual rules apply. Okay, and I think we are having tag updates. Okay, so who do we have from App Delivery? Hello, that almost always feels like school. I was also always the first in school due to the name. Oh, <laughs> next year uh, we'll shake it up and go in reverse order one time. No, it's fine. Yeah, by the way, also thank you for Thomas who helped on these slides. So I'm just presenting you, but he helped out here as well. Good news is for the cooperative delivery working group, we have our chairs selected with Josh and Robert who already started working on this. As a reminder, this is the working group that deals with bringing infrastructure and app delivery closer together. So they kicked off the work right now and expect more results to see when they, uh, well, they're already kicking the tires on the work, but uh, when more deliverables are there, they also already started looking into scenarios, uh, definitely more to present the next time we meet, which will be obviously in the new year. They also, which is the last point here, um, especially Josh uh, put a lot of work into Potato Head, like running the distributed app examples, bringing them up to speed for um, all the different CNCF projects that are out there for different uh, delivery, um, delivery methods. So, so this is being updated so they, also took this project as their reference project. And now we're reaching out to um, some of the other um, CNCF projects that are used in their REST delivery examples to update them as well, where we have good feedback. And next step will also be to obviously add observability because if we obviously want to detect whether a deployment has failed or not, it would be good to use observability data for this. Um, on the presentations, we had the conveyor presentation that the TUC wanted to have us as a follow-up to their sandbox uh, submission. So they have been very supportive and shared information on the conveyor project or actually collection of uh, tools uh, that are available. Uh, we still owe that you see um, a detailed feedback on this one. Um, we are kind of entirely wrapping it up. I, uh, we understand why this is a complex project to look at. So for those who are not familiar with Conveyor, 
It is a collection of tools that help you to migrate your application from wherever you're running it. So whether it's in a very traditional uh, environment or a Cloud Foundry environment over to Kubernetes with a set of tools that have been developed, I think mostly out of Red Hat and IBM Consulting um, over to Kubernetes. Um, the initial request was to figure out how much this is really related to OpenShift. Uh, this is, so we looked at the project, we also talked to the team, it's not really heavily tied to OpenShift, also most of the demos are OpenShift, but everything that is created as done at Kubernetes manifests. There are some dependencies there though, um, I mean, they for example rely on Tecton for uh, the delivery parts, some of them, where we have to talk to them, some of the base images when they convert a bare metal application to a containerized application use Red Hat base images that we need to follow up on with them and um, other smaller things that we need to follow up with the team. Overall, or however, the question is, how do we deal with a project like this, which is a collection of tools? So it can never actually be in that stage of like being used in production. It is used to move workloads to production. So I think it depends on also how like the pro a progression of a project like, uh, like this would work because it's more or less a tool collection than a project in the more traditional sense of the other CNCF projects. Um, I want to add a comment there. There wasn't really a good place to put this in the form. Um, this is Josh Barkas, and I work with the conveyor folks sometimes. Um, they submitted it initially as a single project rather than as separate projects for each tool. Um, the reason being that there's sort of a currently a six component to conveyor, which is um, an online community of um, service, you know, of, of service providers working on migrations. Um, and so they would, you know, they think of it as a single project. Um, but if the CNCF would prefer to have it as um, separate individual tools projects um, and that the community be sort of handled separately, um, that's, def that's a possibility that, that um, they can consider. Yeah, I think it takes, we will also circle back with the team and provide a bit more of a condensed review. But the first one thing, I think it is a bit different than other projects where it's mostly doing one thing that like this collection of tools, not even projects that you run. I, I do see where it has value uh, for uh, in, in some bits and pieces, but I think it's a general question. How do we deal with this? Looking back at the app delivery charter when we started with app delivery, helping people migrate workloads to Kubernetes was a topic that we wanted to deal with. So it is kind of in scope. Uh, but the question is whether this should actually be a, maybe at some point even a working group and like some, the, the, the tools maybe doing something similar to what the GitOps working group did, but we still need some time, some more time to wrap our head around it. This was just an update. And obviously, uh, willing for input on this one. It's we understand why it wasn't straightforward for Sandbox, and we are working with the team. They're very supportive. Uh, I think we'll need a bit more time to get to a final conclusion and recommendation here. I hope this is somehow a helpful update. Looking also through this, you look a bit confused. Yeah, I think that is helpful. I mean, uh, there's certainly. Uh, it, a few question marks over how this fit. I mean, it clearly is targeted at people using cloud native software, but I think we need to sort of, yeah. I mean, if you're still working on it, then um, I think that's going to be very helpful input into figuring out how, how this should fit. I mean, it's, it's, I would say it's, it's clear that it's not definitely out of scope but it's not quite clear how it fits in scope either and yeah I, I, there's, there's certainly yeah we had questions I think we're getting closer with them but i think we need a bit more time because it, also like it's a, a lot of different tools like for example it, uh, i think it's called I don't remember all the names i think it's crane that helps you to migrate a vm to kubert so the question is shouldn't this actually be part then of kubert per se maybe even so that, that that's why like there's a lot of things in flux but we, we're working with the team to get there okay 
Uh, on the other updates, yeah, we have two projects which are currently uh, in review, which are over, like one that is in review for incubation, that's uh, Captain, which is still ongoing. Right now, mostly working for um, feedback and uh, from, from TC sponsorship. And backstage, it's not officially yet uh, in review, but obviously we're checking the ones that we would be receiving and we have done the, um, the sandbox for backstage. Uh, the feedback there is that some of these projects have been or are waiting for uh, TUC support for, for quite a while. And we totally understand that you're all are busy. We just also want to remind you of the rules that if a project waits for longer than two months, it would actually be required to start all over. And from the, from the process, I think if a, if a sponsor doesn't appear within two months, I think that was the, the, the previous deadline we have there on, on those projects. And we were, we were also willing to help, especially with due diligence work, uh, if the TC wants us to and, and support you there, but we want to ask how can we support here in helping these projects uh, move forward. So I'm pretty confident as far as backstage is concerned, I've put on the PR that unless anybody else had more time, I would step in and sponsor that one. So I think I've now got to the point where I probably could do that. Okay. So unless anybody else is waving their hand, jumping up and down going, I want to be the TOC sponsor for backstage, then let's put me down for that. Yeah, you had the proposal in there, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd already commented on the PR that I was up for it, but I just didn't have capacity in November, so, yeah. No, totally answered, nice yeah. So um, I think that's more or less, and again, if the TUC needs us to help more here on some of those projects in the reviews phase, so we, 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 I mean, we talked in internally, so we're happy to help and support you in everything we can, because some of the uh, those due diligence have been going on for since, I think, June or so. So wherever we can help, please let us know. Uh, we try our best where we can help. Um, process note, um, I'm, I'm trying to be able to find where we have that two month kind of deadline in here and I'm not finding it. Can you help me out where, where this came I'm, from? I'm searching for this one, but it says if a sponsor does not appear within the first two months, let me find this for you. Yeah, please do because yeah. like, I'm, uh, it's not working like, it. that is not actually what's happening in practice. And so I'd like to be able to correct things in here. Thank you. Uh, I mean, the, the general question came up be, uh, like how are projects actually supposed to get a TUC sponsor? I mean, obviously you don't want people to reach out to all of you directly, but is there an official process on how to get to a TUC sponsor? Because sometimes they reach them out to us if they don't have a sponsor yet, how we should be, where we can support them, which I think is a bit unclear to projects how they should do it. I mean, if they know people, that's easy but we want to treat everybody equally, also people who might not have direct contact to the TUC. Part of what is happening here is, I think part of the answer, which is, so actually Calvin is an, uh, an individual that's on the call that represents um, Chaos Mesh. I and mean, it had been in a similar situation where they're you know, looking for some TUC sponsorship. And so um, once or twice I made a note of it uh, in this call. And so what you're doing is the same thing that I had done. And I, I think that that's, Part of the answer is just you know elevating raising attention i mean yeah i don't know if that yeah, I, I don't know. yeah i'm just just pulled up the the process so um it the status of outstanding incubation pro proposals are reported on a monthly basis right here right now uh and we have the check-in at the end of this meeting i think there's a list of current status of uh projects so I think that's the the answer to how we chase it, how we you know how we make sure that there is awareness of projects waiting for or looking for TOC sponsorship. Um, and I I find the thing about the two months. So it says if a TOC incubation sponsor is not set forward within two months after the PR has been submitted projects may request that their proposals discussed at a forthcoming TOC meeting by adding it to the working doc. You know, it, it's not saying it has to start again. It's saying 
we can raise our hand and say, please talk about us at this meeting. So that's, that's there the was, yeah. Maybe there was an I'll, I'll send it to Amy. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll please do. I, I very much want to be able to like the hunt this one down because that, that yeah. In practice, that is not what is occurring. No, no, it, it isn't. So luckily, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, totally fine. And for the record, Eloise is being very, very, very gracious um, because I'm the person, I'm the TOC sponsor for Kepkin and I have not found the time yet. But thank you for the kick in the rear and I, it will elevate in priority um, and I will do my best and I will be in touch. I, I try to be nice, you know, I was just asking. Yeah, not... you are very nice. <laughs> <clears throat> also, I think that backstage people would be would appreciate uh, support there as well. I think it's also a great project. Yeah, okay, I completely agree. Down. And I, yeah. I think I, I hope I had set their expectations yeah. by responding in that PR and saying I couldn't do it until I think I said early December. We're pretty much still early December, so hopefully that's okay. Just you know, just naming just, about. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> I wanted to give them a Christmas present. No, it's, no, it's a good reminder. Yeah. Oh, I've sent the link to the, somebody privately rather than everyone. Let me forward it. <laughs> okay, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, we already covered the Potato Head project uh, from the updates. Um, there we have the updated the delivery samples, reaching out to other people. What is also still ongoing, not on this list here, is uh, the working group on, uh, that we have around chaos testing. This is the very complex one where we need to bring people in from all the other tags, security, observability, uh network and so forth um i'm confident that we will soon be able to have progress there as well it just we just want to ensure that everybody feels on board with what we're doing there as well and therefore obviously we have to give a lot of people the time to have a say and the word in this one that's that's all that is there okay that's it from tech app delivery i think i have taken a bit more time than usual I was muted, trying to block out the horrendous storm that just went by. Thank you very much, Alice. <laughs> Hello. Okay, well, I'll go for it. I'll, yeah. Yep. I'll try to make up some of the time because we've got a short report today. Um, uh, for governance, um, we're going to have uh, values and readme templates um, headed to our TOC liaisons for approval uh, pretty soon. Follow the link if you're interested in those. That's just basically, um, you know, projects need certain information in their core README. And also, um, we feel that it's important to have a statement of values in governance documents. Um, the, um, and wanted to provide some examples of that. Um, one of the things that's actually come up through this is um, uh, we now have a relatively complete set of templates. Um, for projects to use for a lot of their necessary um, CNCF um, project documentation and um, <laughs> haven't really come up with a good way to make sure that new projects that join the CNCF are aware that these are available as examples for them to use and copy. Um, the, um, we don't actually necessarily want to dump this on them with all of their materials that they get when they first join. I, uh, the CNCF, because those materials already run to many, many pages, um, and that wouldn't help with visibility. Um, so if anybody has any ideas for how we can actually make projects aware that, um, you know, these maintainer resources are available um, uh, as they join the CNCF, uh, we would love to hear them. Um, I, um, I have a yeah? question on the, the mm -hmm. things like the values, just having a, a very quick look through. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why these would be per project rather than across the CNCF as a whole? I'm looking at the example and thinking, I kind of hope that, you know, from, from a quick flip yeah. through, I would hope that those are reflected across the whole organization. And in that case, there's no need to have a well, project. If the, right, if the CNCF wanted to adopt a value statement, then that would obviously make it easier for the individual projects because like the COC, they could just uh, reference it. Um, and um, we'd be happy within uh, the working group to um, work with somebody on the TOC to, to wordsmith such a value statement, um, if that's something the TOC wants to do.
Anyone have any opinions? <laughs> Personally, I feel like this would be a good thing to. Yeah, I second that list. Uh, I think um, having something in Kubernetes that people refer to all the time is very helpful. So we should try to do something similar. This, yeah, uh, there we, is an existing well, value statement in Kubernetes, is there? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Okay, well, um, we actually have in an hour and a half, we have um, just by default, the governance working group has mostly been the one um, uh, talking about this, although it's really all across tag contributor strategy. So we have in an hour and a half, we have the governance working group meeting. And then on Thursday, we have the full tag meeting. So if one of the members of the TOC um, wants to take this on, but we need that member of the TOC or it'll just never get approved, um, we would be happy uh, to to help work on such a statement um, to be adopted for the whole CNCF. Is there a, um, who, who's the liaison or who are the liaisons for contributor strategy? Um, it's... Oh, one of them is, is me. I think it's me and yes. Sad. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yes. <laughs> but I'm I, always sending you messages, so yeah. I, I didn't I want think... to jump out. I can I can take it uh, I can take it on uh, Josh, but I won't be able to join today's meeting. I, I just found out that my yeah, daughter okay. to college okay. last week, so I'm taking her for a test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, since I raised my hand, I'll try to show up for the meeting, Josh. Okay. Um, yeah, I was gonna say pick pick either meeting. Um, the. Um, yeah, we can. We can uh, do that just tell me. All, let's do that offline. Okay. Um, uh, so just either brief updates for the things. Um, I, our liaisons here approved the contributor growth framework uh, documentation. This is advice to projects on how to attract contributors to their projects, um, including contributors who don't work for the original sponsoring company, um, like number one thing that projects ask us for help on. Um, and so there's a bunch of documents at contribute.cncf.io um, to help them with that. Um, uh, spearheaded by um, Catherine um, uh, for writing all that. Um, and so there's a terrific piece of documentation. Um, and maintainer circles are ongoing. We had one at KubeCon. I don't believe that Paris was able to join us today. And so I do not have a report on that. Um, and another one will be scheduled for January. Um, uh, one of the other proposals that we had in here that will probably be coming back as a PR is, um, remember the CNC, CNCF staff, Ehor proposed, he needs a place in, within our hierarchy for CNCF managed mentorship programs to live. Um, uh, things like the CNCF's entry into Google Summer Code. Um, and he was suggesting that tag contributor strategy be that place. Um, and that's what we have. Yeah, I, I don't know, uh, maybe Amy, I don't know if you know whether there's uh, any kind of staffing responsibility for, for that or if it makes sense to put that into the tag. I think, I think it, it, I missed who it was that Josh had said he had suggested. Uh, Ehor, Ehor oh, from okay. the CNCF staff. Okay. That was going to be my answer to um, yeah. Liz. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that, that is technically where that is yeah. living. But right now, also being able to kind of expand that out, sure. um, because there's lots of mentorship that kind of like runs around and being able to kind of more formalize it into, well, here's one place to put it. And I know we do have Ehor on the line as well. Correct. Yeah. And like basically the idea behind that was not like to make this not only stuff only owned, but also community owned. It doesn't mean that like CNCF staff, staff will not be responsible for their mentorships at all after we remove this, but this is kind of like making the ownership uh, of the mentoring programs like more open and visible to community itself. And like granting an ability for folks who are the community members, but not, uh, not the members of the CNCF staff team to uh, basically to run, to run and help run in the mentorship programs as well. 
we had some good experience in the past with, let's say, Kubernetes project, for example, where we have people who are a part of the community itself, they're also running the mentoring programs there. So this might be a good idea also to, uh, to uh, basically to have the same, the same or the similar process for the CNC of white mentoring programs. And Josh, is that something that um, the tag would like to take on? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Are you going right? To I was going to say. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, but it's one of the things on the agenda for Thursday. Um, okay. The um, a, it's kind of a uh, toss up because um, on the one hand, it's a logical place for it to live if it needs some place to live within the CNCF and be visible, which which apparently does. Um, on the other hand, uh, the tag has actually lost some of our regular contributors um, over the last couple of months to a variety of things, including um, health issues. Um, so this would be a matter of, hey, we put it in the repository, but currently it doesn't have any additional people to staff, it doesn't have any additional um, contributors to staff it. Um, so this would be a case of, um, you know, Yes, we can put it there, but we want it to attract new people who are not currently involved with the tag because, because otherwise nothing will happen, which is one of my reasons for putting it on our slide at this meeting. Uh, well, speaking about staffing, it's not an issue for now at all. So like we have CNCF staff who is staffing this. Mm -hmm. The bigger question would be if somebody, uh, like eventually somebody from community may want to, to do this and we'll have all of this open to public and, uh, we we all, we will we'll only have an ability for folks to to jump in and uh, basically benefit from this rather than developing the brand new process from scratch when somebody will want to do it. So stuffing is not an issue. It will be it, like basically what do we have right now will be owned by the tag, by the tag like formally, but it will be stuffed by the CNCF staff basically by me at this point of time. I think in that case, so long as you know, it, it, the, the fear would be that if there weren't enough volunteers, the whole mentorship program would just not happen. And that obviously would be not a good outcome. So as long as we make sure that doesn't happen. Um, no, 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 no. No, this is being able to make sure that it is visible and that other people have the opportunity to be able to come and let, um, we'll see what happens, but yeah. being able to make it visible is kind of the main goal here. Yeah, Correct. sounds very positive if the tag are willing to take that. Great, thank you. Uh, should we move on to what comes after C? Network. I was trying to think, there must be a tag beginning with D. <laughs> All right, so um, Fab Edge, we spoke about as a proposed sandbox project uh, last time we met. And so they'd received some feedback and I think they're digesting, they're digesting their feedback. Um, we'll have a deep dive in, and recorded intro at KubeCon EU uh, about, uh, well, about a lot of activities that go on inside the service mesh working group. It takes up the, it's consistently the um, <clears throat> majority of the meetings agenda. Um, recently, the agenda has been, over the last couple of times, has been on, well, advancements in service mesh performance. Um, there, there have been a few community members who put together um, tooling to make the automation of running these tests um, quite simple. One of the approaches has been using a GitHub action. Um, and the proposal on the last call was to use uh, was to do what the project had been had planned for in the past, and that is to use the CNCF labs to run some of these tests, ultimately creating a, a public facing dashboard for um, the benchmarks uh, on an ongoing basis um, once that and once automation has been in place. And, and I guess with with a, a GitHub action in place, the use of self-hosted runners in uh, the CNCF lab, or using, self, using the CNCF lab as the self-hosted runners, it really facilitates, uh, greases the wheels for running a bunch of performance tests and publishing them. And so on the last call, there was a volunteer to start to work on 
what those public facing, facing dashboards would look like. And so a lot of, a lot of our more the recent activities in that working group have been on service mesh or on publishing those dashboards. So, which makes um, Podtato head um, uh, very uh, of interest because a large part of the discussions have also been on what's the most representative um, workload for, or what, what are the, yeah, what are the best um, workloads to represent um, what organizations and what users commonly have? And it's almost like in, any answer is valid because there's, there's any variety of, of workloads. Having some that, there are some that maybe represent better than others though. Um, and so having a variety of them is helpful. There's a, uh, about six or so that the group has, is using today, but Potato Head sounds like a, sounds like there's an open call for participation there. And so I'm gonna point the group that way. Um, uh, other than that, um, there's probably not, not a lot more to speak about other than the existing um, ongoing initiatives, but nothing, nothing a, a lot new to cover there. So, so pleased to hear about Potato Head. It's uh, great. Um, quick question then, since, since I'm taking the time, is um, Alois or Mr. Schultz? Uh, was there input from, in, in terms of the original design of Pod Tato Head? So the original design goal that we had is we wanted to build a simple to run app that everybody can run on their local machines, uh, which was kind of like the shortcoming of some of the microservice demo apps. Because if you want, if you want to do delivery, you need to run multiple stages of an app. So you needed something very tiny. So we wrote this very tiny Go app, and our goal was not to have an app that's written in different languages, which like Sock Shop was mainly targeted at, but rather focus on usual delivery patterns. Like you have a new release that is slower, um, have something that needs a persistent volume claim eventually, have something that needs different types of credentials at different stages. So more these delivery type of use cases rather than how do you write something in four or five different languages, while especially looking for people who want to learn these tools, being able to run it on their local machines easily. Like you can run, just spin up a kind cluster and run a multi-stage environment, which you couldn't do with Sock Shop. And the goal was always to extend it with more use cases that are very much related to um, mostly delivery, always with the chance that the people who want to learn it can really run it easily locally. And you have traditional, the challenges that you have in the, the delivering cloud native applications in there rather than the complexity of the code itself. The, the code is pretty simple. I mean, it, it delivers a body part pretty much. But the idea is, okay, what if this is on a persistent volume and I'm upgrading and upgrading the persistent volume or how do I handle like a blue green deployment if I'm delivering two types of arms at the same time? Or how do I know that like one is slower delivered than the other one? So these are more the use cases that we were looking into that's why we took this very simple app um, that everybody finds funny, by the way. Thanks for that. That, that um, good. Yeah, you know, there's there's some part part of the view of this the working group and of the service mesh performance project itself is that performance is a consideration along those continuous delivery gates, if you will, or like a, throughout each of those steps that. At, at one or more of those points, performance might be considered. And so, so that's, uh, there's, there's, yeah, there, there's also a pretty active community also on the CNCF Slack. If you find, look for potato heads, you'll find them as well, but we're definitely willing to collaborate. So that was the idea of starting this project. Well, the initial idea was to give a presentation at KubeCon and then we just saw more and more people participating in it, to be fair. But let's catch up on it offline and well, in the CNCF Slack with the, other, the rest of the team. That's good. And that's it for Tag Network. Thank you, Lee. All right. <laughs> we, we, we may not have Tag Observability today. Um, we'll give them a minute, but yeah, they've, they've been busy. Anyone want to raise their hand and speak for observability? 
I'm going to oh, take right. that bullet point about KubeCon activities as positive, but uh... yes. all good, all good. <laughs> Runtime. All right, hello everyone. Okay, so uh, quickly some updates uh, in terms of projects and activities. Uh, so in containers in runtimes in the specific space, we uh, had a presentation from Yuki. This is basically uh, OCI compliant container runtime in Rust. Um, we also have a presentation scheduled next year in Jan, January. Uh, for Inclavera containers is a uh, take from some of the Intel folks on confidential computing. And in terms of workloads, we had the Knative uh, project uh, submit their uh, PR for incubation. So I think um, DIMS is the sponsor for this, but they're also lay in Dave, I think they're helping out with the with the incubation. Um, so they're working on the on the due diligence document right now. It's um, still pretty early. Also, not actually noted here, we are working on the due diligence for Kubevert. Alina is a sponsor for that, and I think the document is almost ready. Uh, so we provided some feedback and they're incorporating that feedback. Armada is another project uh, uh, presented. This is basically running batch Kubernetes jobs across multiple clusters. So I think it's a very similar project uh, uh, to Volcano. And I don't think they're thinking about applying for the CNCF yet, but uh, maybe they'll they will decide that in the future. In open cluster management is a project that helps um, the helps the management of, of Kubernetes clusters and the lifecycle management of Kubernetes clusters. And so there's a series of utilities. Uh, this is um, a sandbox project already, and we're having a presentation on December 16th. We're very close to Christmas, but they decided to schedule that that time. In on the machine learning operations and AI edge space, we have another project uh, called K0S, uh, which is similar to K3S, and that's um, presented on December 16. It's a it's a Kubernetes distribution for the edge. And finally. Uh, we're working on the batch system initiative uh, working group charter. A lot of folks in the community are interested in starting this. Uh, some of the folks in Volcano, uh, some other uh, in working on the cube batch. And I think there's some also, also some folks on, on the Armada group and in, in some groups and I think in, they're at Apple, they're also work, um, interested in starting this working group. In KubeCon, we have a, a session in KubeCon China scheduled for next week, uh, attack runtime session. I think that's all the updates. Happy to take any questions. All right. No questions. Uh, sorry, are, are, you go ahead. Which of those projects are actually submitting to CNCF? Do we other than Kinesi, which says so? But, or have they not said? I can't. I'm just trying. I'm curious about some of them. Yeah, Inclover Containers is already sandbox. Yuki is not submitting yet to the CNCF. Um, so I think they only yeah, and Armada is not submitting yet either. And K0, K0S is not submitting yet. So those, okay. those are, yeah. Uh, so the only one is K-Native and, and in Clover containers is it's a part of the sandbox and open cluster management is also part of sandbox right now. We, we had an initial meeting with Armada to, to explain to them what it means to join the CNCF 
and they are now thinking about it. Who is the TOC? I'm just curious. I don't have an ulterior motive for this question. Who's the um, TOC sponsor for K-Native? Hey, Dems. Awesome. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dems. <laughs> I was trying to write a, a note to Ricardo saying, hey, there is this set of people trying to... <laughs> anyway, uh, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, Dave and Lay, they also jumped on, and I think they're happy to help too. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to take the lead on this, and I'll um, bring uh, a, a, anybody else who's interested in like reviewing and helping with end user interviews, like Dave uh, and um, uh, Harry, both of them showed interest. So I'll bring them in uh, when we are you know, a little bit down the line. Great, thank you. I do, I do see your comment, uh, James, on the Kubernetes community um, issue. So I think this is sort of an overlap here, but uh, just making sure that uh, I'll, I'll make sure that, you know, there's also a, a communication back and forth between the yeah. working group that, that is trying to be created in the, in the tag. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello, security. Yeah, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Um, sorry, I'm not on video. Um, so um, this has been a little bit of a slow month for tax security. Reason was there were a number of conferences, so a lot of people were attending conferences, but still we've been working on a number of initiatives. Um, we are planning our roadmap for 2022. At the same time, cloud native security white paper um, version two, we've been working on table of contents for that and a list of participants um, who can contribute to that. Uh, we've kicked off the discussions for cloud native security con 2022. Um, the serverless white paper uh, has made a huge progress, but there are still some sections which are being worked um, on as well. Um, the major piece of work that we've been doing is um, NIST reached out to us um, and they were um, they had a draft of SSDF version one. And when um, myself, Emily and Brandon, we reviewed that, uh, we had a ton of feedback because that did not address cloud native technologies. Um, they were not able to incorporate that because they wanted to go live with the draft because of their timeline. But since it's a draft, we have almost like six months to a year to update that document with all the cloud native security input that we had provided. Um, and we also wanted to address SaaS, right? When software as a service provider is using cloud native technologies, what does that mean for SSDF and so on and so forth? So that is a good piece of work um, in progress um, that we will take, we are working on and taking up with Nest um, going forward. Also Cloud Security Alliance reached out to us and they want to collaborate on some initiatives, um, especially like um, cloud native security controls serverless initiatives as well. Um, the reason for that is, um, for, for, from our perspective, why we are interested is we are having challenges finding volunteers and who have the right knowledge. And Cloud Security Alliance already has a large um, list of participants. So there may be some synergies that we can leverage and you know um, do some good work there for the industry. But those were some of my updates for you all. Any questions or concerns? Yeah, the lack of people, right? Like we are sending more more folks to you all uh, for like self-assessment and um, security buddy and whatever, right? Uh, other things that you are doing. So uh, yeah, that's a little bit concerning. Uh, anything you can do to increase uh, uh, participation would be really good, I guess. Yeah, and assessments is one piece, but also there are a number of other initiatives like um, App Delivery has a project on chaos engineering. There, there's a component of security chaos engineering that we want to work on. Similarly, with the service mesh group, we want to make sure all the security policies are being addressed. And um, so there are overlaps that we want to contribute to, but again, we have limited bandwidth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, I have a question. So who who is driving the service white paper? Is a service working group or something, something, somebody else? 
Um, so this is not about, um, so the, um, there is a serverless working group and they work on serverless technologies and evolution and use cases, et, et cetera. We are focusing on serverless security only. Okay. Then what I, are the security I challenges and what, how we mitigate them? Yeah, I think I will suggest that we add some like serverless security white paper because I, I, I'm reading to like more like a serverless white paper which has a generic purpose. Right. So would you like to collaborate? I mean, we can just publish one paper which has serverless technologies as well as serverless security. Either way works for us. I think if uh, we are going to publish a generic white paper, I think the serverless working group folks should be involved to see if they if, to see if they have some opinions. But if it's just about security, I will say maybe we can call it a security, serverless security with white paper. That is my suggestion. Um, yes, you're right. It is. Um, um, that's my bad. I should have added serverless security white paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serverless white paper. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's probably still worthwhile. You know, not just getting that word into the title, but um, also maybe getting the security working group, you know, to to review the the paper while it's in draft, make sure they're aware that it's happening. It might, as uh, yeah, as serverless experts, they might have some serverless, security yeah, thoughts too. Yeah, ser yeah. yeah, serverless working group. Yeah, I think this should be um, and definitely let the those folks know to see uh, if they have some ideas or inputs in this white paper that it will be uh, doing good to this yeah we are happy to help um lee let, let us know when your draft is ready and we'll be happy to chime in i think it was the other way around it was to say oh, okay. security white paper it would be worth making sure that the serverless working group okay definitely you know have a chance to um get their thoughts in as well definitely once we have the draft ready we'll share okay. it with lee thank you I think it's amazing that these external organizations are, are coming and, and getting involved and asking for input. So I think that speaks to all the great work that's happening in this tag. It's, it's really good. Good job. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate it. <laughs> Any other questions about security? All righty, storage. Hey, Shink here. I will be giving an update for tech storage. So regarding the projects, we have Langhorn that is an incubating project now. For FS, Raphael finished the DD review for the incubation request. So from tech storage side, we are recommending incubation. We are now waiting for TOC on the next steps. I think Raphael has pinned Harry about this. Uh, so I see Harry is in meeting. Do yeah, yeah. Comments? So, yeah. So I have finished almost um, most part of the um, due diligence stock. It generally looks good. So next step is uh, the 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 maintainers of the Chuba FS have already arranged the three end user interviews, uh, which has already involved me. So uh, this will happen this week. So uh, I would say after this week, the end user interview will will done, and then we will. Uh, to see, uh, we will see if we want to move to the next step based on the feedbacks from the end user uh, interviews. Yeah, this is um, the current status. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, um, we on to open EPS. We had a meeting with the team a while ago. There are different sub projects under open EPS that have different uh, statuses. So we need to consult with the uh, uh, TOC liaison on how to handle that. So I think I will uh, talk to Alex about this and uh, reach out to our liaison. And uh, Curve Storage System, uh, they uh, presented the project in the last tech storage meeting. There are a few questions that came up in the meeting. The team had replied through email on some of those uh, questions. They provided additional documents so we will go through those and follow up with them. And for those uh, two white papers, Cloud Native Disaster Recovery and Performance and Benchmarking White Paper, uh, they are completed and we presented them at KubeCon North America. And we also had a meeting with our 
TOC uh, liaison Erin a few weeks back discussing what are the next steps for the tag. So we came up with a few things the tag could work on. One thing is to have an end user survey to understand their pain points. Another thing is to invite sort projects to present and invite end users to attend to get their feedback. And we also want to look at persistent storage and the databases and see how different systems use persistent storage. So those are the things that we are going to work on next. That's all from tech storage. Any questions? Is Curve applying for CNCF? I think so. They are, they want to, uh, that I think they presented uh, maybe at a TOC meeting, then, then we, uh, then we got the request for them to present to- Maybe it was a sandbox meeting. Yeah, maybe it was a yeah. sandbox application. Okay, yeah, Amy's confirmed it. Yeah, fine. Yeah, they applied in sandbox. Uh, in August, we reviewed them and said, hey, take storage, please take another look. And that's where we are now. Uh, hey, Shane, um, mm -hmm. Open EBS, uh, I think one of the vendors who started it uh, mm -hmm. got bought out, I think. Okay. Do you see any uh, impact on the activity uh, yet or? Uh, so we have, yes, yeah, so that's the thing. We have not heard from them for a while. Uh, so Karen, right? Karen Mover, he moved. Um, and we have not seen him in the tax sort meeting. And uh, yeah, so there is another person who uh, usually will attend the meeting and uh, uh, we have an email thread discussing this one. We just have not heard from them for a while. Okay. So uh, I will reach out and see what's yeah. the status. Yeah, we might need to like <laughs> ice this proposal until we, we know what oh, is Oh, okay. Happening. Maybe they yeah, could be a, like, it could have a big impact on them, right? So right. Karen has yeah, okay. Sure, thanks. Yeah, that's a really great question. Thank you very much, Xing. Thanks. Okay, uh, I think that's all the tags. Is that right? And- It is indeed, and this slide is now out of date. Um, <laughs> Yes, is that like a, a, just imagine backstage, just kind of moving under like you know a, a K native here. Um, only thing that I really want to highlight right now for like all the TOC that's on the call is if you have not yet voted for Litmus Chaos, please do so. Yes. Okay. Good. Is that also true for Open Metrics as well? That's open this. Metrics is like the uh, that one is currently in voting, but I believe that one is passed. Um, we are working with that team to be able to make sure that we can get the press releases out for all of them. So. Okay. Yes. Um, other Anyone highlight. have any updates they want to mention about the projects that their names are against or the incubation work that they're doing? I know Ricardo was working pretty directly with um, Volcano. Yeah, so that, that one is, is very close to opening the public vote. Yeah. Um, I'm still, I've, I'm in process of talking to users of Intoto, but if there's anyone else who's a user who hasn't come forward, or if tag security knows anyone, just put them in touch with me because I'd like to find a few more. Similar for Kubevert, uh, I'm uh, wrapping up on user interviews. And if anybody on the call uses Kubevert, uh, please reach out. Uh, quick question, um, Justin, TRPC. Yeah, so I, I'm a little bit behind on that. I were I am working on it, um, but um, yeah, I still I'm uh, in Toto process revived, so I kind of was prioritizing that. But I'm try, I will try and do them both in parallel for a bit. Oh, this this wasn't meant to be a, a moment of oh, shame. It was more just no. like a uh, where 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 might that be? Uh, that was all. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's currently behind in Toto, but I, okay. I'll, I'm going to try and get them at the same stage.
looking around for any else to be able to kind of bring up. Is there anything else on the um, meeting minutes waiting for sponsorship we should talk about? Um, we have Keycloak, we have Quay, we have Artifact Hub, and Open EBS we've already talked about. And I believe we had some from Artifact Hub on the line. Matt, you Hello. are with us. Hello. I am. I hey, am. <laughs> Hello. Yes, we would love to drum up somebody to take a look at Artifact Hub. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions. So uh, Artifact Hub is a project that essentially lets you find distributed things that are cloud native artifacts wherever they end up being hosted in different places. Um, but there's a Matt. wide variety. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just got excited there from, so there's a, with respect, uh, with respect to the Meshery project, there's um, service mesh patterns as external artifacts that are uh, like basically a collection of YAML that imbues best practices for how you would uh, run a particular behavior of a service mesh. And so these patterns are, there's a, a catalog being developed um, by the project now, which sounds like those patterns might, like it sounds like Artifact Hub might be a good repository for those, those patterns instead though. So I, I figured I'd ask right now if that like sounds like a fit. It does. Uh, uh, right now you can search for Helm charts and plugins, Falco rules, OPA policies, OLM operators, Tinkerbell actions, kubectl plugins, Tekton stuff, uh, Keta scalers, Core DNS plugins, and Keptin integrations. Um, and so this seems like another thing that could easily fit right alongside that. Thank you. Quick, quick gut check. Yeah, yeah. And we even do things such as related packages. So say you go install one thing and there might be something else in a different category that relates to it. Maybe something around Falco that relates to the database you've installed. We'll even try to show you related things that you might also be interested in to help discovery of some of these uh, different projects and um, the artifacts they have. Let me take it one step further if you don't mind. And that is that um, alongside the pattern service mesh patterns, there's also, um, been a lot of focus in the Meshery project on uh, WebAssembly filters and curating those and uh, making those available in um, in the Meshery project. And and but people have been bringing new filters, and so we've been the project has been considering how to distribute those. And so these yeah, are binaries. And, yeah, and, and I'd be happy to talk about that. Um... And, and further, if somebody wants to, uh, what a number of projects are doing is they're letting people distribute them themselves because the big problem is discoverability. If different people distribute their own things, how does somebody discover it? You go to a typical search engine and you're not going to find a lot of those things, which is the reason for Artifact Hub, because you can go look and scope it down to the projects and see related things. It kind of it provides that search uh, across just the cloud native landscape. All right. One question I have about Artifact yep. Hub is I, I, I recall that it was kind of funded by CNCF when it was first kind of conceived. Is it now being developed by kind of contributor? And is it still being funded? Is the development still, it's being still funded? some of it yeah. still? Yes, some of it's still funded. And, and the, the folks who were involved before are still involved in making sure that it's successful. Yes. Okay. Uh, hey, Matt, is the uh, is there going to be only one instance of Artifact Hub that is run by CNCF or are do we expect people to run their own Artifact Hub instances for their orgs? Yeah. Um, we expect there to be one main instance that will be publicly available. So, because the goal is discoverability, 
right? And if you had a bunch of places where you've got to go, it kind of hurts discoverability. And so we expect to operate the one artifact hub so people can do that. Yet at the same time, there are reasons to have your own instance, especially in corporate networks and for your own company. There's other reasons to have one, maybe where you don't want it to be globally discovered, right? And so you can actually go ahead and install artifact hub and operate it. And it is an example of how you can distribute it and a bunch of the different uh, image scanning features and other things as well. And so there's an easy install. You can Helm install Artifact Hub yourself if you want to just go run it. And will it be competitive to, you know, if CNCF is operating its own Artifact Hub instance, is that essentially competitive with other registries? So it's not a registry in that it hosts your artifacts. It's a centralized search across those things. And so you don't actually push any of those artifacts there. Um, You may have a registry or repository holding something on Docker Hub or Quay or in Azure's registry, and you want those things to be discovered and easily found. How do you do that? You get them listed in a search engine, and that's what this is. Okay. My kind of Matt, gut feel is this is not like a traditional t- CNCF project. You know, it doesn't, yeah. it, the motivations for it, I think are very interesting and exciting and valid for the community, but not necessarily the same as the motivations behind a, a regular project. Yeah, that was one of the things we discussed when it was initially coming about. And at the time, the decision was, it, even though it's different, we should go through the new CNCF project and go through the normal stages. Yeah. Because I suppose one other way of looking at this would be to say, should this just be a CNCF service, you know, in the same way that the landscape is a service and yeah. uh, kind of bring it under the kind of staff umbrella rather than the community. I think that's maybe worth thinking about. Okay, yeah. we are over time though, so let's yeah. not have that whole discussion. I now. think I just wanted to jump in for a second, Liz. I'll call myself sponsoring Artifact Hub, but I think to your point, the the first question to answer is the one you just brought up, and I can take working with Matt and them to figure out the answer to it. And assuming we continue with what Matt said of going through the stages, then I'll sponsor it. That sounds great. Thanks, Dave. Thank you for the progress. Much appreciated all. Wonderful, everyone. Take care. If we don't see you again, have a wonderful time over the holidays. And happy see you in January. Year. Bye, all. <laughs> oh, happy holidays. See you all next year. I, I hope we'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone.